What's going on, y'all? Rap Critic here, and this was a Patreon-voted episode. And if you'd like to get a say in what I cover next, head on over to patreon.com slash rapcritic or ko-fi.com slash rapcritic to make review or live stream requests. Okay, so it's time to talk about Kanye again, because he went number one, so now we can't avoid it. And look, uh, let's get the separate the art from the artist conversation out of the way now. Yes, it's possible. When you hear a song, it strikes you how it strikes you, right? That said, I don't want to watch any films produced by Harvey Weinstein anymore. And that's not because knowing what he did makes the art suddenly not good. It's because as a human being, it feels like praising the art of a person who's done shitty things is implicitly supporting someone whose art is doing what gives them the platform to do the harm they do. So I sit before you and say, nah, I wouldn't feel good about heaping praise on someone who's been using their public persona to spew unabashed hate speech. But for Fortunately for me, today's song sucks ass, so I don't have to worry about that. Like seriously, this track is not even worth the controversy. Now I, I can understand the hook being a little catchy for some with that raucous soccer hooligan vibe to it. But even if you do like the hook, this is a song with four fucking verses in it, and they take up a lot of time saying shit that is not interesting. Way too rich to drive a road. I mean, this verse from Rich the Kid is fucking nothing, man. I done put in all the pros, I done put her in the rows, I done put up in the ghost, I done reached all my goals. And it's like, okay, that's nice for you and your personal vision board, but why should anyone else give a shit? And, you know, if it's just gonna be some mindless dumb shit, that's fine, but yeah, it can at least be funny or have some smooth wordplay, but, but there's just nothing here for the most part. And it's fine if you like it, but hey, there's a reason why songs like this get well-deserved low ratings. There are a billion other songs I can find that are actually entertaining when they talk about materialistic shit, so why settle for this? I don't want your host. Yeah, nigga, reach out of those. Okay, I, I could have swore I heard him say this before, because I, I distinctly remember not caring the first time. I done put up in the ghost. I done reached all my goals. Hey, he did say that before. What, what, what the fuck? And it's not like a notable repeating phrase or something like that. It's just a similarly phrased sentence four bars later. Uh, like, that's just laziness. I don't want your host. Yeah, nigga, reach out of those. I done put up in the ghost. I done reached all my goals. And even going back to the hook, doesn't it just feel like empty slogans that don't really connect? For instance, sure, the first two lines are sex rap lines, but what does that third line have to do with anything? Because like without any other context, it sounds like him doing the impossible was the act of him convincing a girl to have sex with him. Like, what? She actually wants to have sex with me? I thought that would be impossible. Feels a little weird saying this to Kanye, but have a little confidence in yourself, man. And with that IG post he apparently made complaining about it being hard for him to get model pussy, is shit, maybe there was some emotional truth seeping through there. But I guess stuff like that's bound to happen when you talk like a bigot. Uh, the girls with those pussies that you want to have sex with probably ain't trying to hear all that shit. But nah, it must be that evil group that controls everything that's keeping you from getting laid, am I right? I mean, that villainous cabal of Jewish bankers somehow couldn't stop you from getting a number one hit song and album, uh, but they're totally in control of everything else though, right? And look, see, now this is how knowing too much about an artist can inevitably start to affect how you perceive the art. Because that knowledge only makes the hook really sound like Kanye, a man in his mid-40s yipping like an overexcited puppy about finally finding a girl who either doesn't keep up with recent celebrity news or just has a loose enough moral code to not care. Well, the second Kim Kardashian clone he scrounged up wasn't afraid to be a part of his project, so hey, maybe the song is all inspired by her. Now, now wouldn't that just be romantic? That said, uh, Ty Dolla Sign and Playboy Cardi are kind of having fun here, right? I mean, they're just trying to make some basic head busting music, but it just sounds limp for the most part, especially Ty's verse. She it like she's fags. We turn up to the max. I wop her from the back. I gave that bitch a cramp. And it kind of makes you wince at first, because it's like, d does he really think back sounds like it rhymes with cramp? But then as the verse keeps going, you hear he's kind of doing a thing where he's bending the rhyme into the next rhyme sound. They love me out in France. In the hood, I'm good, I'm stamped. But it still initially hits kind of weird when he ends a four-bar phrase like that, because the ax sound has so much consonant difference from the amp sound. However, as it goes on, he rhymes it with France, which is still a bit rough, but at least it's a little bit more phonetically similar. Then, like I said, there's Playboy Cardi, who's, like, at least he's doing some fun wordplay with the song title and stuff. She ride date like a carnival. Been over and having flashbacks, she gonna heat me up like a carnival. I feel like the energy gets kneecapped a bit when he goes from the third to the fourth line. The way I pop my shit, the host not ready. I'm going barnacles. Moving to feel like a Jason, can't get arrested. I make him stop me. Rhyming barnacle with stumble. Again, these awkward lines where the cadence of the rhyme isn't landing quite right on the fourth bar. It just keeps taking me out of it. He recovers a little bit rhyme-wise, but by that point, there's so little interesting that's actually being said. Like, it, like, it just doesn't matter. She tatted my name on her titties. Yeah, you could bust it, but it's a barrow. <laughs> 
Sitting back counting up doors, I was raising the burrow. She wanna taste the chicken and swear today, he'll come back tomorrow. It's just half ass storytelling bars that don't even really go anywhere. She needs some credentials just to be presidential. Okay, uh, twisting credentials so badly to make it rhyme with presidential, you know, that, that's so stupid it wraps back around to being cool again. I'll, I'll give it some points for that. Plus, he does have a couple cool lines at the tail end of the verse. Dollar signs all of my dreams, I don't ever see Z's. Wow, 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 this way. Cover my body like it's a disease. Wow, wow, wow. But by then, I'm already checked out. Uh, the shit goes on for so long with nothing clever or memorable being said, uh, the gas gets let out of the tank by the time we get back to the hook. And musically, the constantly repeating roaring crowd bit just sounds like a tired retread of his Yeezy era bag of tricks to try to hype things up despite the deflated energy in the bars. Oh god, and then we gotta get to the man himself. It's the Game of Thrones. Hey! Oh man, and the fucking name drops in this verse, they don't get any better. And what's even worse is the lead in to all the name dropping. It served us apart since the day we was born. Anybody pissed off? Gotta make a drink the yard. So this first line is all, oh no, society is bad because it makes us watch porn. Because I guess I'm still doing the Christian thing, but it's like, wh what the fuck are you even talking about, bro? The hook is all about getting head from hoes and riding the dick like a carnival. And hey, isn't this from the album where you made the latest Kim replacement clone put her butt on your album cover? So where the fuck is all this moralizing shit coming from? Then the stupid bit about making pissed off people drink urine, it gets followed up with this. Now I'm Yay Kelly, bitch. Now I'm Bill Cosby, bitch. And it's like, okay, you're just embracing the shit lord status at this point or piss lord i guess but to follow his lyric it's like oh if you're pissed you can drink piss so you can call me r kelly or bill cosby what why, why the bill cosby reference i mean other than being a moralizing douchebag who's clearly been a hypocrite this whole time now i'm puff daddy rich that's me to me rich oh oh god and it's the way he specifically phrased it too like, wow, the torrent of charges against him hadn't quite come out by the time he recorded this, but man, oh man, talk about bad timing. This is just getting harder and harder to listen to. It's like audio slug, fucking get it off me, get it off me. And I know what you're thinking at home, you're trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, right? You're probably thinking, N -n no, we meant it like, y you guys are treating me like the bad guy, so I'm embracing it. Fine, I'll be the boogeyman you perceive me as. So, like, yeah, despite him specifically naming a bunch of literal rapists, no, 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 he he's not admitting anything by lumping himself in with them like that. He he's doing it like that to, to be self-aware of how he's being treated by the media. But 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 then this line comes next. What she said, she said my dick. And she said she ain't said my dick. She gonna take it up the ass. Like a ventriloquist. And it's like, oh, oh my god, what are you doing? Why is this happening? Because we started on some, oh, women sure are deceitful shit with the, huh, why'd she say she's up my dick? But then she say she's up my dick? Which feels like it's trying to allude to women making assault allegations, right? But as far as I know, there hasn't been any specific case about that against Kanye, which is what makes it so weird that he's putting a scenario like this in a verse. And it's so awkwardly worded, it's not really clear what's actually being alleged. But then you hear what comes after that, and it's like, oh, okay, we, we gotta stop right now, because what the fuck are you saying? bro like you're presenting this girl who's sounding like she either isn't clear on what happened or is maybe being duplicitous about the truth but fuck all that because your response to that is well she's gonna take it up the ass anyways like holy fucking shit dude and how does this gel with all that bullshit earlier about ooh jewish people are forcing us to watch porn but i'm the good person who's gonna pull you out of that evil but i fucking guess not because i'm also just trolling for model pussy too regardless of whether or not they want it apparently i mean sis taylor swift since i had to roll on the wrist i'm a new jesus bitch hey Hey guys, re remember when Kanye was on that whole I'm living for Jesus kick and people were calling it back then because it was super obvious that it was really about his own cult of personality all along, but a bunch of people who treat religion like a sports team hopped on his dick anyways? Yeah. Yeah, that was funny. It's for what they did to Chris. They can't do shit with this. Got my kids in a fake school. We ain't... Guys, this clearly sounds like an unwell man who can't even keep his mental composure for a full verse anymore. So yeah, this line that's clearly being cut off before he says something even more incendiary is him accusing the school that Kim Kardashian put his kids in of being fake. And again, we come back to this idea that sometimes you just can't escape mixing the art with the artist here because you literally have to know what he's talking about in his personal life to understand that line. And it's the most absurd aspect of the whirlwind of his life to bring up too because if you've heard anything about his Donda Academy and the recent allegations of how that shit's being run, it's rich to hear him accuse any school of being fake. Uh, what with the pictures of his students not having any chairs, being threatened with shaving their heads and putting them in cages as punishment, and an apparent incident with a staff member where he threatened to punch one of the workers before doing the Super Mario dance and jump punching into the air while declaring I'm gonna give you another chance another life Woohoo! so here's the thing I wanted to get about all this in the wrap up here 
This man needs help. But because he's got money and more than enough yes men surrounding him, he'll never be pushed to get that help. And we're all just watching as his life's slow motion POD music video car crashes in front of us. So overall, as a critic, I'd give this a 1 out of 5. It's just more overhyped but undercooked bullshit. But as a person, I gotta say, I feel so creepy about watching this all play out. Like, sure, anyone who's a bigot or acting like a callous shitty person is probably actually a wounded spirit reeling from whatever trauma they've gone through, but that shit ain't an excuse. There's plenty of people who've been just as wounded and don't fall down these rabbit holes of nutbag behavior. But as long as this close company's doing nothing but sucking up any remaining controversy dollars they can until the well runs dry, I guess we're just gonna have to deal with this. But hey, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like because it helps, comment if you have something to say because it helps even more, and hit the subscribe and the bell because that's what helps the most. And if you want to support the show, of course, that's ko-fi.com slash rapcritic for one-time donations and patreon.com slash rapcritic for ongoing donations, where you can see episodes early, plus join the RC Discord to chat with me and fellow fans. So until next time, I'm the Rap Critic. You don't have to like my opinion, but I don't have to like your song.